Shirley. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Teeker. Here's your newspaper. The war news is wonderful. Is that why you woke me up? Oh, I'm sorry. I know it's early, but this is urgent. It's a petition. And we want the Secretary of War to get it before Congress adjourns. Petition? What kind of petition? Demanding that American womanhood be accepted on equal terms with men. What's that? We insist on our right to be drafted. Look, I don't want to be drafted. I just want to get some sleep. Mrs. Teeker, if you don't mind my saying so, American women have been asleep long enough. Miss Miriam, breakfast. You'll be late for your music lesson. Morning, Dora. Miss Miriam, you just getting in? Don't be so theatrical, Dora. I wasn't out all night. Morning, Mother. Good morning, dear. I've told you again and again, you don't look well in that silly little hat. This is a beret, Mother. It's a silly little hat to me. I'm not wearing it as a hat. I'm wearing it as a protest against our State Department. Go on. Our political science class does not agree with the State Department as regards to their French policy. You don't? No, we don't. How does the hat come into it? Well, we've decided to wear the beret. The National Hat of France is our protest. We hope to interest Life magazine. Now, Miriam, you haven't been out with that silly petition again. Oh, Mother, you live in an ivory tower. Don't gulp. Chew. Here's your father. You better put that away. Good morning, dear. Good morning. Morning, Dan. Good morning. Well, well. Oh. oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Dad. I was far off. Oh, that's perfectly all right. How did you sleep, dear? Like a top. Spun all night. <laughs> Oh, well, that's pretty good. Groucho Marx, we all heard it. It isn't his joke. Slept like a baby, cried all night. It's not the same, nothing like it. Now, there's what I call a cute hat. Oh, thank you. The State Department won't like it. I think not, Dora. Oh, it's just half a baked apple and a little cream. No. Your stomach has to have something to work on, Dad. In the morning, you have an empty 30 feet of small intestine. Hasn't everybody? I am in charge of your father's small intestine, all 30 feet of it. I don't care for such talk at breakfast. Please, Dad, for my sake. For your sake? Frankly, I signed you up to give a pint of blood at the blood bank. You signed me to give my blood? They won't take mine. I'm allegedly too young or something. I'll take yours. Put it in the cup and I'll bring it down. Oh, Harry, you had no right to sign your name and commit your father. I signed father's name. Miriam! Oh, just a moment, young lady. Signing your father's name, that's terrible. Why, that's forgery. And I'll thank you if you let me decide the extent of my patriotism myself. I'll cancel your appointment. I don't like that reading, as if you discovered a fifth columnist. As a judge, I felt you had an additional responsibility to set an example. I'm a traffic judge. Let the Supreme Court give blood. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, dear. Dad. Good morning, Ruth. When was the exact morning you stopped kissing Dad when you came down to breakfast? When she started wearing lipstick. It was at my request. She was always much more affectionate than you. Oh, a little something in the air. What time did you get in last night, dear? Oh, about 10.30. Oh, wasn't that rather early? It's late enough. Another quarrel? I... I'll tell you about it later. Clara's waiting, Miriam. Sorry, dear. I'm hardly interested. The game of man and woman maneuvering in pursuit of a mate I consider on the mental level of a game of checkers. Miriam, what do you know about checkers? You're ahead, Ruth. It's your turn, Miriam. A witticism is no answer for logic. You lose, Ruth. Miriam, you're not to take that to your music lesson. Uh, let her take it with her. I'd like to see that petition go through. Dad! Well, it would solve everything if that girl were drafted. <laughs> Morning, Miss Wilkins. Good morning, Dora. Nothing, please. I'll oh, eat something, Ruth. An empty stomach makes for acid. No, thank you. Thirty feet of small intestine, and you probably signed up to give blood. Mm -hmm. Eat hearty. What was the quarrel about, dear? About my using tobacco. You know, Albert, he's kind of a health bug. Always ordering milk for me when I want coffee. And the cigarette thing's his latest. Well, what happened? I promised him I'd given up smoking. I was going to, gradually. 
Well, we were leaving the movies last night when my purse spilled open, and Albert got down on his knees to pick things up. Suddenly he shouted, Cigarettes! Half the music hall turned around. <laughs> Is that all? That's all. Well, that's hardly a quarrel. You can get around that. Well, the smoke corn silk behind the barn. You can't be angry at his being solicitous about your health. It's a strain popping mints into your mouth every time you think you're going to be kissed. I feel like an old drunkard always smelling of cloves. Must be comforting to quarrel with a man in your carpool. Oh, it's 8.40. They'll be coming by. Have a puff? Oh, I can't stand those mints. Be charming, but dignified. Charming, but dignified. How can you manage a thing like that? Don't let it get you down. You haven't got me yet. Harry, what do you think of that comma boy? Well, at 34, he's no boy. Besides being 34. Well, he could take care of a nice old father-in-law very easy. Do you think she likes him? I don't know. You can't tell much about our Ruthie. She doesn't say much. No, she doesn't. I don't know where she got that clam-like quality. Certainly not from us. My grandfather was like that, like a clam. Yeah, I've seen his picture. Do you know why the comma boy isn't in the army? He says he has a bad back. Oh, that wouldn't disqualify him as a husband. I have a bad back. He didn't always have. <laughs> Good morning, Ruth. Good morning, Albert. Where are the others? They took the subway. I phoned and told them I wouldn't be able to pick them up. Why not? Get in and I'll tell you. Well? One second. Albert, what are you doing with a cigarette? I put it in my mouth. Light it, and puff. <coughs> Isn't that the customary procedure? Albert, what's come over you? I was pretty foolish last night. This is my apology. Have one? No, thanks, but it's awfully sweet of you. It really is. I did a lot of thinking last night. If a man and a woman are to get along, and I want us to get along... We do, most of the time. We're going to get along all of the time. And don't interrupt. Do I have to finish this? Uh, maybe you better wait. Okay. Somebody's ringing the bell, Dora. She's answering it, Harry. Oh. Who could be calling at this hour? I don't know. Uh, Mr. William Seacroft. Seacroft? For Miss Ruth. Did you say she'd gone? No, shall I tell him that? No, ask him to come in. Yes, ma'am. It's common courtesy. Yes, certainly. Would you come in, please? Mr. Seacroft. It's Lieutenant Seacroft, Dora. Yes, thank you, sir. Oh, how do you do, Lieutenant? I'm Harry Wilkins, and this is Mrs. Wilkins. How do you do? I'm very happy to meet you. How do you do, Lieutenant? You wanted to see Ruth? <laughs> very much. You just missed her by a few minutes. I could have been here in time, but I stopped to change clothes and freshen up. I was in Italy 30 hours ago. Italy? Well... I've been terribly rude intruding like this, not to call on the phone first. Oh, not at all, not at all. Wouldn't you like a cup of coffee? Why, of course he wants a cup of coffee. He was in Italy 30 hours ago. Sit down, won't you? Wouldn't you like something else? How about some eggs? Oh, no, thanks. I ate on the plane. Dora, some coffee, please. Well, how is everything in Italy? Oh, uh, Italian. Was... Was Ruth expecting you? I mean, this morning. No, she wasn't. She wasn't expecting me for quite a while. Well, she'll be at the bank in another ten minutes. You could call her from here. I wasn't counting on the phone. You know how it is. I've gotten this far without telling her. What time does she usually get home? She's been working rather late Saturdays, about 5.30. You're not going to warn her. Well... Oh, yes, you were. Thank you, Dora. Girls aren't crazy about surprises. 
I noticed you freshened up before you came here. She'd look good to me just the way she is. Oh, I suppose Ruth told you about me. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Black, thanks. Excuse me. Oh, I hope you don't mind. This is all I've had. Oh, that isn't a very good picture of her. It's very good. I took it. This picture's been on 25 missions. I used to take it out for luck and prop it up on the bombardier's panel. Oh, you're a bombardier? Yes, sir, on a B-26. Ah, you must have some stories to tell. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Go right ahead. That's more important. I've only got two days. You think if I showed up at the bank, they'd give her the day off? Oh, they might. Why don't you? I've been over that first minute I'd see her for so many months. I, I kind of don't like the setting. You know, all those people around. She's a teller and accounts receivable. Uh, there'll be people. She's in a cage with bars in front of her. <laughs> bars wouldn't stop me, sir. <laughs> Uh, tell me, uh, how did you happen to be a bombardier? Or are you given a choice? Oh, yes, you are. I was in the engineers when I got to England. Then there was Ruth and her letters. She's quite a letter writer. Anyway, I was there and she was here in a war in between. So I applied for bombardier training. You see, 25 missions, you get to come home. Oh, there must have been some letters. Oh, they were. Considering I'm pretty nervous just being in a plane. My. Wouldn't you like another cup of coffee? Oh, no, thanks. I, I've got some errands to do, but I'll be back at 5.30 if you don't mind. Well, we don't mind at all. No. Be seeing your baby. That's what I call her, baby. You might as well know it. I used to call her that. It's not the same, dear. I'll wander on down past the bank and look in. All right. If I get my nerve up, I might change my mind. <laughs> I'm very happy to have met you, sir. I'm very happy to have met you, William. So am I, Bill. Thank you. Be seeing you. Goodbye. What a nice-looking boy. You'd think Ruth would confide in her own mother. What a family. She ought to have her hair done. No, Edith, you're not to phone her. I'd really be doing him a favor. Oh, all right. Bill. Bill Seacroft. That's a nice name. Yeah, this one hasn't a bad back. We'll use the good plates, Dora. Yes, Miss Wilkins. And serve that two-dollar bottle of wine. I'll answer it. I'll get it. Hello? Yes? Oh, fine. Is it Ruth? Clara. Now, about those telegrams. Miriam, you've been on that telephone since 4.30. There are others in this family. Yes, Mother. Uh-huh. Of course. Well, in my telegram, I said, draft us or take back our right to vote. We resent being nothing more than producers of children. I'll talk to you later. A prominent member of the last generation just walked in. Oh, thank you. Is Ruth home? Dad, the whole world's on fire. And you concern yourself with the humdrum activities of a young woman who's... Comfortable, secure, and very well fed. Court's adjourned. I'll hear your arguments on Monday. Now, is your sister home? Not yet. Oh. Oh, Dad, I know your impulses are right, but you're not throwing yourself into the fight. We need you. We can use you. Yeah, thank you very much. We can use anybody we can get. Oh, Dora. Yes, sir? Bring me a glass of orange juice. In just a minute, Judge, I want to... Now, you. Dora, if you please. Excuse me, Judge. What's the matter, Dad? Don't you feel well? Oh, I feel fine. Dad, you went to the blood bank today. Oh, Dad, I'm just crazy about you. Then stop signing my name to things. Oh, was it hard for you? Oh, there were 20 women in the room. I was the only person put to bed with a blanket over them. I hope the young fellow that gets my blood doesn't need it too badly, because I have no confidence in it. Miriam! Not a word to your mother. Put on your new dress, Miriam. The family's trying to make an impression. On whom? Do as you're told, dear. How do you feel, Harry? 
Oh, fine, dandy, never felt better. You look terrible, stretched out on that cot. Were you there, too? Oh, thank you, Mother. My contribution to the war effort today was two pints of blood. Your, Your contribution. contribution? It was my idea, wasn't it? Here, Judge. Thank you. Get rest here. Yes, Mother. Did Ruth phone? No, and you asked me not to call her. Edie, we better be prepared for a quick decision. What do you mean? I don't think the lieutenant is a very patient man. He's got that overseas look in his eyes. Oh. I'm not in favor of hasty marriages, are you? No, but I hope somebody asks us. Hello, everybody. Hello. How do you do? For you, and for you. Well? Well, what? You're going to burst. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, let's see how long you can hold it in. I'm going to be married. Right away. Well, aren't you going to say anything? We're glad to get rid of you. That's what I thought. I don't know why I cry so easily. Oh, maybe it's my fella. Here, dear. You know, I'm glad we discussed this thing and came to a decision. Dad, it's for you. Western Union. Of course, we really didn't expect you to ask our permission. Now. Hello? Oh, I've got to get dressed. He's coming early. We're going out. Dora, just three for dinner. What? Read that again, please. What is it, Harry? Producers of children? Oh, miss, there must be some mistake. I rarely send telegrams to the Secretary of War. That's my telegram, Dad. Well, it's my telephone. I get the bills. Hurry, pay out of my allowance. Thank Hello? you. Hello? Yes. Yes, that's to be charged to this phone. And could you mark it personal, please? Thank you. Young lady, since when have you been carrying on a correspondence with the Secretary of War? We're not corresponding. Nothing he could say would interest me. Well, I'll tell him. He's a very sensitive man. I hope he can stand it. This family. Edie, I think we'd better have a talk with Ruth. Not that it'll make any difference, but... Come in. Hello, Mother. You can come in, Harry. Oh, uh, you won't care if it isn't a fancy wedding. Oh, Ruth, dear, don't you think you ought to be engaged a bit? No, I don't, Mother. Well, do you feel you know enough about him? All I want to know. It's a big step. No one's ever been hurt by waiting. I'm sure your father agrees with me. Well, there's a lot in what your mother says, as when isn't there. <laughs> oh, we've waited long enough now. We're going to get married. Well. Well, huh? Very cleverly put, my dear. Don't worry about me. It's what I want, and I'm going to be happy, and I know that'll make you happy, too. That does it. Get married. <laughs> Did he make a scene at the bank? Oh, he was very cute. He was smoking a cigarette. Is that cute? He said he'd rather chew tobacco than lose me. He kept coughing. He's not used to cigarettes. Uh, this is uh, Albert you're talking about? Certainly, Albert. The one in civilian clothes, uh, not the one in uniform. Quiet, Harry. What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. Nothing. The two You'll of be you... here any minute now. I never cared for surprising people. Is it asking too much to give me a glimmer of what you're talking about? Just a glimmer? The lieutenant has come home, my dear, to roost. What lieutenant? The lieutenant. He has a two-day furlough. Glad to hear it. Roost Bill's home. He was here. We thought he's the one you were marrying. He went down to the bank just to look at you. We took it for granted you met him. Bill who? Bill Seacroft. Don't you even remember him? Mother, Dora wants to know... Just a minute. Look, I haven't the faintest notion who or what you're talking about. Lieutenant William Seacroft. The one who calls you baby. Bill Seacroft. Just a moment, young lady. 
What did you just say? Dora wants to know if she should make biscuits. Sit down there. Yes, sir. Miriam, what have you done? I'll handle this, Edith. Miriam, what have you done? Come on, I want the whole story right from the beginning, every word of it. I didn't know he was coming back. Who was coming back? What is all this? He said he wouldn't fly anymore. I didn't see how he could come back. How did this whole thing start? From the beginning. It all started with our bundles for Britain. Go on. Well, we decided on bundles for our boys. You remember I was president. You're always president. Go on. We knitted things for our boys overseas. And we sent letters with our gifts to encourage them, to keep up their morale, to tell them America was behind them. Get to this lieutenant. They answered us, and they asked for pictures. You sent my picture to some lieutenant. That's it, isn't it? Oh, she sent more than your picture. You should have heard him. Yes, I sent him more than a picture. I sent him hope and faith and a will to go on. Miriam, do you realize what you did? Yes, I do. I've made a soldier out of a lonely, frightened youngster. Oh, he's a grown man. Not in spirit. I'm not talking about his spirit. The poor sucker's come home to see his sweetheart. He's entitled to something, and he's going to get it. Did he say that? What do you suppose a, a boy who has flown 25 missions, is nervous in a plane anyway, expects? He expects to see his girl. He had your picture propped up on the bombardier's panel. He's in love with you. Oh, you're exaggerating. There's a limit to how much you can do with a letter or letters. How many were there? Sixty. Sixty? Sixty. Oh. You... I wrote him 60 letters. Oh, they weren't all letters. Some were poems. Oh, since when do you write poetry? You never could rhyme two lines. Oh, they weren't my poems. Wordsworth, Byron, and Shelley. I'd send him a poem V-mail, and he'd send me one in answer V-mail. 60 letters. What did you write in them? I wrote him what he wanted to hear. He was lonely and frightened, and, and he poured his heart out to me. Who's going to pour it back? I'm not sorry for what I've done. I've given a soldier to the war. His mother will be happy to hear that. Miriam, you've done some pretty foolhardy things before, but never at the expense of others. No, this is nothing short of criminal. Who's going to tell him that he hasn't been receiving letters from a woman but an adolescent? I don't consider myself an adolescent. Oh, you don't? No, I don't. I'm old beyond my years. I'm quite mature and I'm equipped to handle this. What do you mean, equipped? Careful what you answer. I'll tell him what I've done. I'll make a clean breast of the whole thing. And I suppose you think that'll make everything all right. If you're asking me, do I think that's kind? No. He'll suffer. But in years to come, he'll be grateful that I gave him the opportunity to contribute as much as he was capable of in this struggle of our new generation against the old. You're not to leave this house after school for the next six months. You're not to have any allowance, either in money or in clothes, for a whole year. And you're not to participate in any of your French, China, Dutch, or political science freedom movements while you're under my roof. That's final and irrevocable. I take my oath on it. Harry, please. You're another generation, Father. Don't address me again this evening. This child is perverted, and you're to blame, Edith. You're the keeper of my home, the molder of my children, and I'm not satisfied with the molding. It isn't as terrible as all that, Dad. All right, what's your solution? The solution you've always taught us, the truth. A fine, virtuous solution for us, but what about him? He leaves her overseas in two days. Mother. Yes, dear. Should Dora make biscuits? Biscuits! It really isn't a tragedy. He'll understand. Why, he may even laugh at it. It has its humorous side, I suppose, if you look at it that way. Now it's funny. I may have a warped sense of humor, but... Uh... Well, that's probably him. Just a moment, young lady. Stay right where you are. Now smile, everybody. We're about to be amused. I'll get it, Dora. How are you, sir? Fine, Lieutenant. Won't you come in? Is she home? Yes, she's home. Is she expecting me? Oh, yes. Uh, 
you know some of my family, Mrs. Wilkins. Yes. I believe you know my oldest daughter, Ruth. Yes, I do. How do you do? How do you do? And this is my youngest, Miriam, sweet 16. Uh, oh, I, I know a lot about Miriam. Really? Oh, yes. Ruth wrote about her at great length. And I agree with you. It's our generation against the last. Thank you. I know a lot about all of you. I wondered how our first meeting would be, our first minute, and I couldn't imagine it. But I hoped it would, well, feel like this. Did you? I promised to bring you lilacs, but it's, it's not the season for lilacs. No, it isn't. They thought there might be some in a greenhouse in Long Island, but... How about a little drink? Oh, no, thanks. Well, I'm going to have one. Uh, it's not that I don't drink. As a matter of fact, a half an hour ago, I walked into a bar, but it didn't seem right to fortify myself that way. It seemed cowardly. But don't let me stop you. You're right, it is cowardly. I didn't know what you'd like to do, Ruth, so I got tickets to a musical show and a legitimate play and, and a table at the Stork. But you don't have to do any of them. That's rather extravagant. I don't care. I don't care. I, I didn't count on going to a show. As a matter of fact, your coming is rather a surprise. In more ways than one. Really a surprise because... I... Ruth, I was an hour at the bank today, watching you from behind every fat lady. I thought surely you'd seen me. No, I didn't. <laughs> bank policeman finally became suspicious. Want to know what I was doing there. His name's Mr. Simmons. Has a son in the Marines. We had lunch together. He's very fond of you. Oh, Mr. Simmons is very nice. He's been with the bank over 30 years. And, uh... uh... He used to be in safety boxes. I think I'll take that drink, Mr. Wilkins. So will I. Excuse me, please. My daughter. Yes, sir. It's the man from the bank. They want me to do some work tonight, and I'd rather not. W would you mind slipping out the back way? I wouldn't mind at all. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Would you wait outside just a second? I couldn't humiliate him in front of all of you. I'll tell him when we're alone. Well, he'll be going back overseas in a couple of days anyway. Oh, no, he has to be told. Oh, tell Albert exactly how it happened. He'll understand. And and tell him I'll call him tomorrow. You little brat. I ought to cut your throat. Uh, the subway's two blocks from here. Disappointed? Of course not. Um, where would you like to have dinner? Don't you want to know if I am? If you're what? Disappointed. Why, um... You know I'm not. Oh, uh, we better go. Uh, that man from the bank, he'll... Uh... Miriam? Hello, Mother. Hello, Albert. Dad. Hello, Albert. Well, quite a lot's happened today. <laughs> yes. Guess I'll have to get used to this dressing business. Albert, have a seat. What is it? Well, let's start from the beginning. Uh, you remember an organization called uh, Bundles for Britain? Yes, I do. Well, there was something else called Bundles for Our Boys. I was president. You keep out of this. They knitted sweaters and socks and sent them over to the boys, keep up their morale, you know? And, uh... Ruth's gone out with a lieutenant. A lieutenant? Wait, please. Want me to check your shoes? <laughs> no, thanks. I'll wear them. You didn't in the theater. Well, if you'd looked at the play, you wouldn't have noticed. I don't think you looked at the stage more than twice. I had a good time. Here we are, a very nice table. 
Uh, what's expensive besides champagne and caviar? Well, uh... Bring it. Two very nice suppers. Oh, I see. Well, you just leave it to me. Oh, if Chuck could only see us. Who's he? Chuck, my sergeant. I wrote you about him. Oh, Chuck! I thought you said Buck. He called me a romantic idiot, only that wasn't the phrase he used. He said your picture was probably retouched, and ten minutes after I saw you, I'd be hot putting it back to the subway, alone. Lieutenant. Bill. Oh, yes. Bill. 1934, very fine. That's the bottle for baby. Thank you. Pardon me. When I was flying over Germany, you know what I used to think about? What? This nice restaurant, you and I drinking champagne. When you got something to think about, you're not as scared. I'll have plenty to think about on my next mission. Bill, tell me, how did you happen to, well, feel this way about, about someone you'd never met? That's a funny question. Why is it? Well, I could ask you the same thing. How did you happen to? Oh, I never thought of that. A toast. To the post office department. For bringing us together. I can't understand it. Ruth's going out with a strange man the very day we're engaged. I can't understand it. I think I explained it three times to you, Albert. Harry, wouldn't you like some coffee, Albert? It'll only take a minute. No, thank you. A cup of Sanka. You're welcome. It's <laughs> <laughs> a family joke. Any word that sounds like thanks, we say you're welcome. It's a joke we used to have with the children. What is it that looks like a truck, has a caterpillar tread, and can climb trenches. You're supposed to say tanks. You're welcome. <laughs> See? Yeah. That was the original joke. Now we answer for anything that sounds like it, like sank. You're welcome. <laughs> I see. If she had told him at dinner, they could have been home three hours ago. But perhaps she didn't want to spoil his dinner. She spoiled mine. How Ruth can get involved in one of Miriam's silly pranks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> pranks. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll catch the next one. Would you like some coffee, Harry? I think I would, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I caught that one. <laughs> no, no. You don't say it for thank you. You don't? No. Twelve forty-five. Whatever gave you the idea you weren't a good dancer? When did I say... Don't you remember? Oh, Bill, we're not going to talk about those letters. We've made a rule about that. Why shouldn't we? Well, you're here now, and this is a new phase of our relationship. I loved your letters. The way they jumped around. Let's free India. Let's impeach Congressman Wickley. Let's draft women. Well, I, I thought you'd be interested. I was. That piece on love light in Tibet. Uh, now, no more talk about those letters. I'm crazy about the way you crinkle your nose. It's caused by a malformation of the bone structure, making an unequal stress of the skin. I'm crazy about the malformation of your bone structure. Bill, we came here to dance. You sure are pretty. One, twenty-two. It's only 1.15. I hope I'm not keeping you awake. <coughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Frankly, I can't understand your attitude. Don't either of you realize that your daughter is out with a strange soldier who probably hasn't seen a woman 
an American woman in three years? Look, Alvin, don't you think you'd feel much better if you went home and got some sleep? No, I don't. I think I hear a car. Sorry, Dad. Always coming in with her. We can't let them see us. Why not? Oh, no, it would be too embarrassing. Please come upstairs. Judge, I... Can't... After you, Albert. I can't understand oh, this. Please, upstairs, Albert. Upstairs, Albert. Upstairs, upstairs. Good night, Bill. I had a wonderful time. Good night, Ruth. I'd better go in. It's late. Yes, you'd better go in. It's late. Good night. Good night. I couldn't let you come into a dark house all alone. Now, Lieutenant, you're not going to pull rank on me. You're welcome. <laughs> That's three for you. Well, don't you get something for three? Oh, no, you don't. You're thinking of post office. Let's play that. <laughs> Lieutenant, remember, you're an officer and a gentleman. Well, it's only a temporary appointment. <laughs> now, Bill. Oh, I can't help it, Ruth. Well, then you better leave. It's late anyway. All right, I'll keep my hands in my pockets. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing up? Hmm? Oh, I just came down for a little baking soda. Oh, good evening, young man. Good evening, sir. Did you have a nice time? Oh, it couldn't have been nicer. Oh, fine. Haven't you been to bed yet? Hmm? Oh, oh I, well, I fell asleep while I was reading. And Ruth, that uh, man from the bank. Oh, what do you have to say? Uh, that work he left. It's upstairs. It's urgent. You're not going to work tonight. Oh, I, I guess I have to. Oh, yes, she has to. Well, let me help you. I had fine. Oh, it's not that kind of work. No, no, it's not. It's not. Well, good night, Bill. See you tomorrow. Oh, today. Eight and a half hours. Well, if you're not going to leave us. Well, don't mind me. I'm just an innocent bystander. Good night, Ruth. Thanks for quite an evening. Good night, Bill, and thank you. Good night, Bill. Well, you better start being charming. Come down, come down, wherever you are. Well, good evening, Albert. I've waited here seven hours. Now, now, there's nothing to get excited about. Let's sit down and discuss this calmly. For heaven's sakes, why didn't you tell him? Oh, I couldn't. Of course you couldn't, not unless you stop kissing. Albert, you're jealous. Well, what the devil should I be? I haven't been out with a boy that age since high school. He's a baby. Babies, I usually kiss goodnight, but not that often. Oh, he's the most touching, most romantic kid I've ever seen. Albert, I'd like to have a son just like him. How old is he? 24. You're 22. Won't that be a little difficult? I won't see him again after tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, he's leaving for the Pacific. The least I can do is make things pleasant for him until he goes. Then I'll write to him and break the relationship off gently. I don't think so, Ruth. Albert, you bought war bonds. This is my contribution. I'm going to keep his morale up. After we're married, we'll both buy war bonds. It's an obligation, Albert. Miriam got us into it, and there's no choice left. Please say you'll trust me for 24 hours. Please. I'm too tired to argue. I'm so sleepy, I'm numb. Oh, you're a sweet man, and I love you. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Good night, all. Good night, Albert. Good night. Good night, dear. But I'm still against it. Ideal husband material. Come in. Ruth. Miriam. I stayed up. I was listening. Do you forgive me? Don't I always? Your lieutenant is charming. A little impulsive, but charming. Ruth, my estimation of you has increased a thousandfold. 
Would you mind giving me a hint of what's in those letters? I'm finding it a little difficult keeping up a conversation not knowing what I wrote. I'll get them for you. Ruth, dear, you can tell me. Was everything all right? Did he behave himself? Of course, Mother. Well, I didn't say anything to your father, but I was a little worried. Needy, do you know that Miriam is still awake? Ruth wanted the letters. Since when are you an authority on love life in Tibet? What? I only quoted an article in the New Freedom. Well, I'd like to see that magazine. So would I. We canceled our subscription when it turned reactionary. We burned our copies. Miriam Hitler started by burning books. You must be tolerant of every opinion. I don't like to appear rude, Mother. I know my actions have distressed the family, and I've made a resolution to be more careful in the future. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, you? it's about time. But in world affairs and political science, I consider you as simple as a child. Miriam! Miriam, I never laid a hand on you in my life, but you're begging for a tanning that's going to break my record wide open. Now go to bed this instant. Uh, before you go, Miriam, the letters. I'm sorry I've upset you. You'll find them in chronological order. <laughs> Good night. Mm, the shoebox full. <laughs> I wonder if we ought to have Miriam psychoanalyzed. Mm, Twelve pages. This one's sixteen. <laughs> Listen to this. Dear Ruth, the first paragraph of your last letter I found most touching. You wrote, I consider myself quite adult, yet I find traces of my childhood clinging to me. Occasionally, secretly, I buy a box of candied popcorn, just for the prize. Candied popcorn at my age, at her age. <laughs> and then I dream I'm a queen with a royal lover sending me presents every hour on the hour presence every hour. Mm, the queen likes lilacs. Sometimes I fear my body's ahead of my mind. Sometimes I think we don't know our Miriam very well. Ruth, darling, I have a confession to make. Last week... My, he's certainly in favor of large families. Mm -hmm. Oh. We're not to read these letters. Well, why not? Well, they're not written to us, and, and I didn't realize they were so personal. Well, are you going to read them? They were written to me. As the legal authority in this family, I find a slight discrepancy in your reasoning. Well, I have to read them. You know that's true. And I'm surprised you descend to the level of a peeping Tom. Well, I'm only interested in his reactions to the war. I skipped the personal things. How do you know they're personal if you don't read them? Well, we better go to bed, Mrs. Tom. Come on. <laughs> Good night, Ruth. Good night, dear. Good night. Is this 1113 Wickham Avenue, Kew Garden? Yes, sir. Your Highness, it's 9 o'clock. Your Highness? What does that mean? I don't know. A soldier pays me to say it. I don't ask questions. Sign here. Sign for what? The lilacs. All of them?
nothing, listening to the radio, and reading America's contribution to culture, the comic section. No, I don't think so. I'm confined to quarters. I can't go out. I'll explain later. I said I'll explain later. I've decided to suspend your punishment on Sundays. You can go to Clara's. I'll stay here. I see no reason why I should be punished. Go to Clara's. Very well. I'll be right over. <sighs> Ruth, dear, Dora said you were up until four this morning and that you were crying. Oh, Mother, I wasn't. What did he write about? Oh, so many things. As beautifully as anything I've ever read. He's nothing like he seems. He seems like a nice, clean-cut young fellow. I'll be right down. I certainly don't see what there is to cry about. You are a silly girl. Harry? Yes? She's dressing. Harry, well, aren't you going to shave? In what? The washbowl is full of lilacs. Did you ever see so many? No, they were in my breakfast. I had eggs, lilac. Oh. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Albert. What's all this? Lilacs. You're about to enter the botanical gardens. Watch out for the bees. Where on earth... That lieutenant, huh? He seems to be fond of flowers. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Ruth. I'll take it in here, Dora. Good morning, Albert. Good morning. Had your breakfast yet? Yes, thank you. Aren't they gorgeous? Thanks, Dora. What are they paying lieutenants in this war? I never met anyone who cared so little about money. We meet that type at the bank. Squander dollars on peanuts, then try to borrow nickels for bread. How did he come out in the letters, dear? Unbelievable. Idealistic, that's the word for him. Ruth, I want you to do something for me. What, Albert? I'd like you to have a sick headache, break your date with a lieutenant. Oh, Albert. I want you to, Ruth. We couldn't be that unkind. In some things, it's kind of to be cruel. Well, you said it was all right last night. I didn't know it was going to take on these proportions. You may not be taking this seriously. Heaven knows I'm not, but he is. You couldn't be jealous, Albert. You just couldn't be. I couldn't be, but I am. Well, the whole thing will be over in a few hours. What's wonderful about your girl being kissed by a stranger for a few hours? I leave it to you. Am I being unreasonable? Well, uh, what do you think, Harry? Well, it's never come up. Nobody's wanted to kiss you. Just because he sent a few flowers. Oh, I know the procedure. First he sends you flowers, then he... What's all this? Why, it's candied popcorn. There's 200 boxes. Who brought them? The same man that brought the lilacs. Don't they belong to us? It was in the letters that I like candied popcorn. Now, what are we going to do with 200 boxes of candied popcorn? Well, we could use 100. Uh, leave them in the kitchen, Dora. But there's no room with all the flowers. Well, do your best. Harry. Ruth. Now, Albert, you're not going to be upset by anything as boyish as that, are you? I think I made myself clear, Ruth. Albert. I never knew you could be jealous, and I love you for it. I wouldn't have you otherwise. No woman wants a man who's never jealous. If that does it, I can make you pretty happy. I promise you, the lieutenant won't get on any subject that's remotely personal. We'll ride in the bus and in the subway and... I can manage him, believe me. My worry is, can I manage you? Where do they pick up?
make up those things? I don't know. I only told her about the bees and the flowers. Feel better? Some. But against my better judgment. Now that's odd. What? There's a girl out there staring at our house. Well, she was there when I came in. Is there anything we can do for you? Oh, is this Judge Wilkins' residence? Oh, yes. Come right in. Hmm, she's pretty. I'm not married yet, you know. Why, Albert. I wonder who she is. Won't you come in? I'd like to present Lieutenant Seacroft's sister. This is Mrs. Wilkins, Miss Wilkins, and Mr. Cummer. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? She's waiting for Bill. He told me to meet him in front of the house. Won't you sit down, Miss Seacroft? Thank you. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh, of course not. How long has it been since you've seen your brother? Over two years. And I had to be in Philadelphia just this weekend. Luckily, I left my number. Is your family in Philadelphia? There's just the two of us. I think I'd know you from the description in Bill's letters. He writes a nice letter. <laughs> I hope you don't think it odd we arranged to meet in front of your house. Oh, no, not at all. I called him from Pennsylvania Station at his hotel. I seem to be getting in deeper and deeper. The simple truth is I was engaged to a sergeant in Bill's crew, and they're together at the hotel. Oh, I see. It'd be rather embarrassing if we met. We're not engaged anymore. I'm afraid you have the impression that we're an eccentric family meeting out in front, no? Oh, don't think of it. Do you know what time you're going to be married? Uh, I... I beg your pardon? I said, is there a definite hour set for the ceremony? Uh, uh, no definite hour has been set. Uh, no. On the other hand, Bill may have arranged it himself. Oh, yes, he could have. The reason I asked is I'd like to leave after the ceremony, and I wanted to reserve a seat on the train if I could. I see. Isn't it rather warm in here? It's going to get warmer. It's very warm in Philadelphia. Ruth, could I have a glass of water? Oh, of course. Pardon me. I just wanted to talk to you. Oh. Ruth, I'm a man who likes to face realities. Do you still think the lieutenant is going to be content to discuss the weather? Darling, I think a man ought to trust the girl he's going to marry. Good morning, baby. Good morning. You look fine, just fine. Bill, I don't think you've met Mr. Cummer. How do you do, sir? Oh, how do you do? Pardon me, sir. Oh, Bill, that's not fair. Well, everything's fair in love and war, and I'm in both. Isn't that right, sir? Well, I, uh... Bill! Hello, sis. How are you, honey? I don't know where you changed exactly, but you've changed. Well, so have you, and I know exactly. I don't know how my little sister got in here uninvited, but she's always been like that. She was very entertaining. Yeah, she's pretty cute. I'm gonna have to leave you for a while, sis, because Ruth and I have some personal business. Oh, no, you're not going to leave her. Oh, you bet I am. Oh, I don't mind. Really, I don't. Why, well, you haven't seen her in over two years. After all, she's your sister. Well, that's too bad. I won't hear of it, Bill. It's heartless. Yes. Why can't you all ride on the bus together? Oh, please, now, I'm causing all this trouble, and you two want to be alone. Oh, no, I insist you come with us. Say, I'm not that fond of her. I won't go without her, Bill. That's final. Ruth, three's a crowd. Uh, Albert will come along and make it a foursome, won't you, Albert? I haven't been on a bus since yesterday. Don't let her talk you into it, Mr. Glummer. Cummer's the name. I'll be delighted to go. <sighs> then it's all settled. We'll be back here for lunch at 12 sharp, all of it. Well, that's fine. We'll have buffet in the garden. <laughs> Come along, Miss Seacroft. Ruth, this isn't what I planned at all. You little monkey, you're still tagging after me. Sorry, Bill. All right. You two sit up front in the bus, and we sit in the back. 
And don't turn around. I'll try not to. Goodbye, everybody. I'm a patient man, but only up to a point, and it's been reached. But, Albert, nothing can happen on a bus. It can the way he's arranged it. He'll be mauling her on that bus. And I don't intend to sit there and watch. But you'll be sitting up front. That's just it. What about my morale? Aren't civilians human, too? He's pretty unreasonable. No, he isn't. No, I suppose he isn't. I hope the lieutenant doesn't kiss Ruth in front of Albert. He will. Albert's angry. They might fight. The lieutenant will knock his block off. Bill, you can see for yourself that the front seats are all filled. They could have taken another bus. I ought to have my pants kicked. Only a few more hours together and I waste them grumbling. I'm mad about you, Ruth. There's the fourth largest insurance company in the world. Glad to hear it. I'm a lucky guy, Ruth. Please, Bill, people can see. I was wrong. It's the third largest insurance company. That's what I thought. Who is he, a friend of your father's? Of the families. He, he's an executive at the bank where I work. Banker, huh? No wonder he's so... The word isn't exactly stuffy. Conservative. Thank you. I meant no disrespect, sir. And I'll thank you to stop addressing me as sir. I'm under 85. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Didn't say it. Ruth. Grand Central Station, but you can't see it from here. Say, I've always wanted to see Grand Central Station. Come on, let's go. Well, we've seen the station. Let's go. I got an idea. There was a game we played in London, a swell game called Railroad. Railroad? Yeah, yeah, the GIs were crazy about it. Very simple. How is it played? I'll show you. We divide up sides. Travelers and home folks. I'm a traveler. Now, we'll pretend I just got off a train. Well, where's the fun in that? <laughs> You'll see. Now, Ruth, you stand right there. And Mr. Cummer, you stand right there. Darling, how nice of you to meet me. What a happy surprise. A little juvenile, don't you think? Oh, of course, and no wonder I left out the best part of the game. Come on, we'll play it right. Oh, no, Bill, I hardly think so. Oh, now, Ruth. All right, we'll play it once more. Oh, no, Albert. Oh, Ruth, we have to play Railroad with Mr. Cummer. <laughs> I was sure you'd like it, sir. But this time, I'm the traveler. Right, and I'm the home folks. Ruth, you stand right there. Lieutenant? Ruth! Welcome home, sir. How was your trip? And you looking fine, just fine? <laughs> Well, why didn't you tell me Ruthie was with you? Darling. Three-letter word beginning with... Uh, Harry, you know, I'm not looking forward to this luncheon. Oh, it's going to be horrible. No matter how careful I am, that phone call is going to turn out badly. Watch. Hello? Is, is Lieutenant Seacroft there? Oh. Well, uh, how soon do you expect him? This is Sergeant Vincent. It's terribly urgent, sir. I see, I see. It's one of his crew. He says he's got to be out of the hotel room by 11 o'clock or pay for an extra day. Well, I'll tell you what you do, Sergeant. You come on up here. You've got the address? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, that's fine. Fine. One more for lunch. Well, the safety in numbers. Fate. I'm fighting. Harry, I just thought of something. What? That sergeant must be the one who's engaged to Bill's sister. Or was. They're not supposed to meet. 
Well, if they're not supposed to meet, this is the place for it. Well? Your Highness, it's 11 o'clock. It's what? Hello, baby, this is Bill. I love you truly, truly, dear. Bill, uh, where are Albert and Martha? Oh, uh, missing. Well, they got on with us, didn't they? Oh, they're bright kids. They'll find their way home. Well, oh, there's a seat. You know, it almost seems wrong. The war has been so terrible for so many people, and so wonderful for us, bringing us together. But you have to go back and fly again, Bill. Oh, lots of guys have to fly, but I'm the one that'll have you here waiting for me. You gonna miss me? I will miss you, Bill. Really, I will. You're gonna write as often as before? As often as before. Bill, what if... What if for some reason we didn't go on feeling as we do? What does that mean? Oh, nothing. I, I just... Oh, Ruth, let's don't wait. Let's be married now, right away. Married? We have to change trains to the next station. Well, that's the way it goes. Bill gets his girl through the mail, and I lose mine the same way. Well, perhaps she isn't really lost, Sergeant. Oh, if you saw that letter she wrote. It, there wasn't a phone call, was there, sir? Phone call? From Colonel Watley's office. We're expecting our orders any minute, and I left this number. Well, don't you and Bill know where you're going? Just the Pacific. Might be China or India. Well, I think that's very inconsiderate of them, not telling you. Mrs. Wilkins, I think you've hit on the finest definition of war I've ever heard. Just one inconsideration after another. <laughs> uh, tell me, Mr. Wilkins, is there something? Yes, I surely. Can... Use my room. Upstairs, second door to the right. Thank you, sir. Such nice boys. I hate to see them go. Yeah. Oh, we've got to start thinking about a wedding. Albert will make a good husband. Don't you think? Yeah. Eating. Hmm? Uh, do you really wish uh, maybe somehow... Don't be fantastic. Do you? That's fantastic. Is Ruth back? Not yet. What happened to you, Albert? I was arrested by the Interboro Rapid Transit Company. Arrested? Oh, no. Oh, yes, and I have a summons to prove it. I'm to appear in court next Friday at 2 o'clock, and I don't intend to. You got me into this, and you can get me out. Well, this isn't my court, Albert, but I'll be glad to go down with you. What happened? We were standing on the platform of the train, enjoying ourselves, riding on the subway. How I got hooked into this whole thing, I don't know. How can anyone want to ride on the subway for amusement? Start from the beginning, Albert. Well, let him. I only want the whole story, my dear. The four of us were standing on this train, jammed against the door. We pulled into a station. The door opened. Then it started to close. Just as it was about to close, someone pushed me. And I know who pushed me. The door shut. I was in the station. They were in the train. Off it went. I'm so mad I can spit. I have to sit down. I'm not supposed to get excited. Tell me how you got arrested. Be quietly, Albert. Your face is blue. Thank you. I ran upstairs and got a taxi. We raced two stations ahead. I was going to catch that train. That was very clever. I got to the turnstile just as the train was pulling in. I didn't have a nickel. Talk lower, Albert. So I went under the turnstile. I'm not supposed to get excited. A guard grabbed me by the collar. I tried to explain it to him that I had to get in that train. Another guard came over and called a the policeman. There's the summons. Prominent bank executive arrested for stealing nickel. This hasn't turned out well at all. No, it hasn't, Mrs. Wilkins. 
And I'd be very grateful if you wouldn't say nothing can possibly happen. But nothing can, Albert. It's daytime. All he can do is propose, and that's just words. It's how a man proposes. You just don't ask her, you kiss her. And if she objects, you keep kissing her. And she'll keep objecting, and he'll keep kissing her. And I hope you don't think I'm eccentric if I tell you I just don't like it. You're getting blue again. Thank you. Well, I guess we got separated, Mr. Comer. Yes, we did. Where are Ruth and your brother? Oh, we got separated, too. Really? I'd like to ask you a question. What is it? Did you push me out of the subway? No, I didn't. Your brother couldn't reach me, but you could. You pushed me out. He told you to. He did not. Oh, it was your own idea. I didn't say that. You thought they were entitled to a little privacy. You said that on the bus. Well, I must say, Mr. Kummer, it doesn't seem very unreasonable. After all, he couldn't very well propose to her with you pointing out tall buildings. Couldn't propose? Did you hear that? She pushed me, all right. Uh, Miss Seacroft, may I present Sergeant Vincent? How do you do? We've met. Mr. Albert Cummer. How do you do? Chuck's a friend of Bill's. Well, any friend of Bill's is a friend of mine. The lunch is ready, Miss Wilkins. Oh, dear. Well, I don't think we'd better wait for Ruth and Bill. They've probably found something else to do. <laughs> Well, lunch, everybody. Well, what happened? Well, you see, everyone wants to name the plane after his girl, so we drove for it. Bill wrote down Ruth, and since I'd lost... Well, I wrote down Ruth, too. But the rear gunner won it with Helen. That's a pretty name. Well, I didn't stay Helen. After our fifth mission, he got an invitation to her wedding. Oh. Did you change the name of the plane? He added one word. That's how the plane got to be called, Helen Gone. Pardon me. I'll be right back. Harry, don't you think... No meddling, Edie. We haven't worked out our own problems. <laughs> you know... In my day, we used to chalk our girls' names on broken-down automobiles. Well, not my name. You didn't have an automobile. I chalked yours on the subway. Here they come now. We weren't sure you'd be back That's for That's perfectly lunch. all right, perfectly all right. You tell them, Ruth. Ruth and I are engaged to be married. <coughs> engaged? <coughs> Oh, that's all right. It almost matches. Congratulations, Bill. Thank you, Chuck. Well, this is something of a surprise, but congratulations. Thank you, sir. I'm sure you wouldn't do anything you wouldn't consider right and necessary. Congratulations, both of you. Let's make it unanimous. Yes, why not? Congratulations, Lieutenant. Thank you, Mr. Cummer, and I want to congratulate you, too. Me? Yes, I understand you're being married. Uh, yes, but it's a little confusing at the moment. Oh, that's too bad. I hope it works out. I hope so, too, but I can't see how. Oh, it'll work out, Albert. Believe me. My only advice is what did it for me. Be firm. You may be right. Fork it over, Chuck. Yes, sir. The lieutenant works fast. <laughs> I don't see how the war's lasted this long. This isn't much, Ruth. It's only the beginning. But you give me some time. It's beautiful, Bill. Let me look at you, baby. I'm not going to see you for a long, long time. So how about a little lunch? Oh, yes, Bill, some lunch. There's some cleaning fluid in the cabinet upstairs. Dora will help you. Thank you. Go ahead, Mrs. Wilkins. Say it. Nothing more can possibly happen. Ruth had a reason for all this. I'm sure of it. You you have to understand. Understand? Yeah. I have a deposit on a house. A minister in a church reserved. 
And I have to shake hands with a man who's engaged to my fiance? Please, Albert, not so loud. He's leaving the country. It'll only be a few hours more. Do you realize what he can do in a few hours? The future Mrs. Seacroft. Want some ham? No, I want to get married. Awfully good ham. Look, honey, we got plenty of time. Let's get married this afternoon. Bill, we agreed it would be different if you had more time, but you're leaving in a few hours. Now, let's be practical. People don't get married after knowing each other for one day. Well, you're always reading about it. But you never read about what happens to them later. You're a dirty coward. I guess I am. I wonder if the jeweler will take that ring back. You'll be lucky if you get your daughter back. May I sit here, Mother? Mother? Well, that's very nice. <laughs> I hope you don't mind my not calling you Father. I'd like to call you Judge, unless you object. No, oh, no, Judge is fine, fine. Carries a little more respect than Father. You know, Mr. Cummer, you and I both being engaged have a lot in common. <laughs> Haven't we? Call me Albert Bill. I'm an old, old friend of the family. Thank you. I can just see our kids calling you Uncle Albert. We're going to have a big family, Ruth. Uh, well, n not for a while, Bill. Oh, I want a large family, as quickly as possible. Kids all over the place. <laughs> Won't you like that, Grandma? <laughs> Will you pass Uncle Albert the mustard, Grandpa? Well, anything you'd care to say? No, thank you. Good. I've definitely decided never to speak to you again as long as I That's live. That's fine with me. What about that curly-headed Marie? And what about your insulting letter? Which I've completely forgotten. Same here. If you had only waited for me to explain. But I don't choose to now. Well, nobody's asking you to. What explanation could there be? An engaged girl out with another guy. If you had one ounce of common sense, you'd realize if I had done anything I shouldn't, I wouldn't have written you. So out of my way, please. You wait a minute. Telephone, Lieutenant Seacroft. Here it is. The axe. Excuse me. Darling, it isn't as serious as all that. He's leaving. Why, he's probably getting his orders now. Very pretty. You know I'm going to wear your ring. Why not? You have ten fingers. There's room enough for ten engagement rings. Lieutenant Seacroft speaking. Just read the part where we're going. What? Ruth! Everybody! Yes, sir. Oh, fine. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll pick him right up. Thanks. We're staying in America. We're going to be instructors at McDill Field, Florida. No. No. Yeah. Oh, this is my lucky day. <laughs> I don't know what my expression is like, but you ought to see yours. Don't struggle, dear. Just drift. Very nice of the Army, isn't it? Ruth, we're going to leave tonight. How soon can you be ready? Ready? Uh, you don't mind if we get married in Florida, do you? Well... I don't think I could do that, Bill. Oh, sure you can, hon. I just couldn't leave. Uh, the bank, they're so short of help. Albert, Mr. Cummer can tell you. It'll be impossible, really. Oh, shame on you, Albert. And you're about to be married yourself. Well, she's not exactly in my department. It's not up to me. But I'm sure she couldn't leave. Oh, come on, Albert. You're not going to keep two people in love apart on account of a measly bank, are you? Well, you answer that. We finally agreed it was my fault. Oh, I didn't say that. Bill, we want to get married. Even if it's just for today? Even if it's just for today. Sis, your first wedding present. Chuck and I are staying as instructors. Florida. We are. We sure are. Oh, Chuck. Oh, Judge, would you mind marrying them? They're a little pressed for time. I'll do anything anybody says. Anything. Honey, let's make it a double wedding. We'll have to discuss it alone, Bill. Oh, you're a hard woman. Uh, Chuck, I'll pick up the tickets and the orders. You help Martha get ready. Yes, sir. Everybody's getting married. Isn't it wonderful? Bill, I... I have to talk to you. All right. I, uh, I have a marriage certificate. I'll go get one. Well, I'll go with you. I'd like to get them a little present. I'll stay or not. You better go along with Mother and Dad. Let's go out on the porch, Bill. 
Don't worry about me. She's up against a stone wall. Now, what's this nonsense about you're not coming to Florida right this minute? Please don't. I'm not going to Florida at all. Well, you said you wished we had more time together. You stood right over there and said it. And now we got all the time in the world. Well, I... What's the matter, baby? Listen to me. The plain truth is... When I promised to marry you... I didn't intend to go through with it. You have to make that a little clearer, Ruth. I thought you'd be leaving. You promised me you would. Well, try to see my side of it. You thought you loved me. You were going away to face something terribly hazardous. I had no other choice. I do love you. Oh, no, but you couldn't. I'll get leaves in Florida. I'll come and see you. No, Bill, no. Oh, I know you like me, Ruth. I couldn't be wrong about that. There are other factors, Bill. Ruth. I'm really not interested. And it wouldn't be right to waste your time. I'm sorry it turned out this way. And it's entirely my fault. I think it's best if we don't let on with your sister getting married. Um, you could say I'm going to join you later in Florida and let it go at that. That's, that's very kind of you. I'd like to find a little gift for Martha and Chuck. I passed Ruth in the hall. Her face was screwed up. If I know that expression, she's about to cry. How does my expression strike you? She told you. She told me. You're angry with me. You know. Oh, that's very generous of you. The best laid plans of mice and men, Afganga Glee. Robert Burns. Whatever happened to Burnsy? Never see him around anymore. We exchanged a lot of Burns in the beginning. I thought your taste in poetry was exquisite. Must have been hard for you to find time to write all those letters. I did mine in school as part of the typing practice. Do you feel all right? Fine. I wouldn't feel too badly about Ruth. I know you were attracted to her on the surface, but she's pretty bourgeois. To be able to marry Albert, a reactionary of the first water. Holy H. Harry! What's the matter? You wrote those letters, didn't you? Byron, Shelley, lilacs, candied popcorn. What must she think of me? And your parents? Why, I'm the biggest sap that ever lived. You didn't know. You tricked me into telling you. Albert. Of course. She's engaged to marry Albert. Holy H. I didn't mean to tell you. I've only made it worse. Uh, no, no, you didn't. It was as bad as it could get. How can you ever forgive me? Look, Marion. Don't let Ruth know I know. Don't let anyone know. 
she did this for me. She could have told him, but she didn't. She wanted me to have these two days. Let's keep it that way, Miriam. Promise? I promise. Cross your heart? I'm not a child. This one just came. Every hour on the hour. I gotta go get those tickets. Where shall I put this? Just any place, Dora. We're ready to get married. Oh, Bill isn't here. He isn't? Well, what's keeping him so long? Oh, he'll be here. Martha. I want you to help me fill this out. There's the pen. I got Judge Kindridge to waive the three-day waiting period so we can go right ahead. Where have you been? Oh, I, I waited around for a bedroom cancellation. Finally got it. You and Martha have to be at Grand Central in an hour now. I leave at midnight. Oh, we can make it. I can't understand you not being able to talk Ruth into going to Florida. What happened to you, Bill? I had confidence in you. I... I tried. Say, when exactly are you coming down? We ought to know because he's not going to be fit to live with until you do. Well, I don't know exactly when I can. Bill understands. Oh. Well, I see we're all here. Well. Haven't you told him? That's fine. Thank you. Now, come along with me. Ah, well, we're all ready to start. Albert and Ruth, you stand here, and Chuck, next to her, please. And Bill, uh, next to Mrs. Wilkins. Eh? I guess we're all ready. Friends, we are gathered here to join this man and this woman in the bonds of matrimony, which is an honorable estate, and not to be entered into it unadvisedly or lightly. If any person can show cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him now speak, or hereafter forever hold his peace. Now repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. And with all my worldly goods I thee endow. And with all my worldly goods I thee endow. And thereto I plight thee my troth. And thereto I plight thee my troth. Aren't you on your right hands, please? In accordance with the authority vested in me by the law of the state of New York, I pronounce you man and wife. Then may follow such additional remarks as the official may deem advisable. <laughs> it's advisable that you hurry. You can do that on the train, dear. The official gets the first kiss. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, sir. You. You're welcome. The first one will be called Bill. If it's a girl, the second one. If not the second, the third. One of them will eventually be called Bill. I hope I don't put you to too much trouble. Good luck, sis. I'm so very grateful for everything. I hope you'll be very happy. I know you will be. My turn. <laughs> As a man about to go to the gallows himself in two short weeks, that was very educational. You better hurry, Martha. Well, I'll get my things. Hey, you're not leaving me. Edie, perhaps we can help him. Well, uh, I could use a drink. Join me? Don't mind if I do. 
Uh, Ruth? Oh, no, thanks. Straight? Fine. Kind of stiff, isn't it, for the first one? Oh, it's my fourth. I, I picked up a few on the way over. You might as well know. Miriam let it slip. I know all that happened. I'm sorry, Bill. I, I was hoping you wouldn't find out. I know. Thanks. I never thought it would go this far, but you're so impetuous, and one thing led to another, and there was no point where I could stop it. Of course. Well, it's over now. Why don't we drink, too? Your marriage, if I may. You bet. While you're leaving at midnight, we'll drive you to the station. Oh, no, uh, please don't. I, I'll just wander around town until it's time to pull out. Nonsense. We'll take you to the station. I'd rather you wouldn't. Oh, but we insist. He doesn't want us to, Albert. Oh, thank you, anyway. <laughs> you know what kills me about the whole thing? All those letters and poetry flying back and forth across the Atlantic. <laughs> that kills me. <laughs> Hello. Oh, just a moment, please. It's for you, Albert. Thank you. <laughs> it's the first time I felt it safe to leave you two alone. <laughs> I think you'd better take it upstairs. It's not the hard week about the church. Perfectly all right, Dad. The secret's out. We all had a good laugh over it. <laughs> I think you'd better take it upstairs. Oh. <laughs> Chuck and Martha had better hurry. Miriam, what are you doing here? I live here, Father. I hope there are no hard feelings, Bill. Well, of course not. What right would I have to feel that way? If anything, the obligation would be the other way. <laughs> you couldn't have been more considerate. Well, you certainly couldn't have. You know, the whole thing's really funny, the more you think about it. My coming here the way I did, the way you acted. You were very considerate. All of you. Very considerate. Well, <laughs> there won't be enough room on in the car for all of us in our bags, so I'll catch a taxi. Oh, uh, these are Chuck's tickets. Would you tell him I'll meet him at the train? Right. Goodbye. Bye. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Bill. I lost two dollars. A little bet I made on paper. Did you think I'd run off with him? No, no, not at all. It was just such big odds. I only bet two dollars. A lieutenant I've met for one day. That's all it's been. Just one day of his being touching and amusing. And, and you think I'd exchange that for a man I've known for years who offers me security, who loves me, and whom I love? I only lost two dollars. But you thought I'd marry him. You wanted me to. I'm a judge. I never take sides. You wanted me to marry him. No. As you say, Albert offers security. And it's quite likely you'll be a lot healthier without the cigarettes. The mere fact that Bill was very attractive and amusing... You do prefer Bill. Ruth, I thought fate was pushing you. 
Well, I'm a fatalist, too. And he's gone. Oh, I liked him, I admit it. And if he had kept on another moment just now... But he didn't. And that's fate, too. I'm going to have a drink. I'm over him already. And by tomorrow, I'll be over him still more. And by the day I get married, I won't even remember what he looks like. I, I left the wrong railroad tickets. I've always wanted to see Florida. What do you mean? Just crazy about it. Are you sure? Certain. Can you leave now? Well... <laughs> you know, by an odd coincidence, I happen to have an extra marriage license in my pocket. Dad, you're joking. <laughs> no, no. I brought it along just in case. Now, you've got to make it out, but fast. And Dora, we want you for a witness. Witness? That's right, Dr. Hardwick. We're ready for the wedding bells. Yes, indeedy. Well, could we have the chapel for Sunday? At 10? Oh, that's fine. I'll go and tell the bride. In accordance with the authority vested in me by the laws of the state of New York, I now pronounce you man and wife. I hear them hurry out the back way. Uh, I'll send you a wire where to send my clothes and tell Albert there's insanity in the family. Goodbye and good luck. Oh, okay. uh, here we go into the wild blue yonder, flying high. I definitely got the church for Sunday, Dad. What's the matter, Harry? Well, if you'll all step into the next room, this will take just a few minutes to explain. Hi. Oh, excuse me. Is Miss Ruth Wilkins at home? Harold! Harold Clobbermeyer! No, no! Oh, no! Oh.